Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to start talking about hybridization. And so what is hybridization? Well, hybridization is a process by which the molecules take existing orbitals and remorph them, reshape them into a different shaped orbital. A different shaped orbital that will be able to make bonds with other atoms, which will probably do the same thing, or not necessarily. Sometimes the other atom can simply have one valence electron available to make a bond with that reshaped orbital in the atom that we're dealing with. So let's, for example, take beryllium. Now, beryllium is the fourth uh, atom on the periodic table. It has two electrons in its 1s orbital, two electrons in its 2s orbital. So basic, basically, from that perspective, you wouldn't expect beryllium to make many bonds because both of the orbitals that it has are already filled and it has no electrons in the 2p orbitals. But what will happen is that there will be what we call an electron promotion. The beryllium will take one of the electrons in the 2s orbital and move it into one of the empty 2p orbitals and so it'll look like that. And so that will then be an excited state because you have to put energy into it to make that happen. Now that, of course, would not be very beneficial to the atom unless it can get something out of it. And the reason why this will happen is because once that happens and the hybridization process takes place where two new orbitals are created out of the existing orbitals, it is now able to make bonds. And once it makes bonds, it puts itself into a lower energy state and you get more energy back out than what you had put into it in order to get this hybridization process to actually take place. So we put some energy into it, we get an excited state, and from that we create two new orbitals, two what we call sp orbitals, and we'll see in just a moment what that is. You might already get a feel for that. An sp orbital is a new orbital that's shaped out of an s orbital and a p orbital. And so from taking an s orbital and a p orbital, we can shape two sp orbitals, and we'll see in just a moment what that is. Then, of course, we still have two empty p orbitals that are not being involved in the process because they did not have any electrons in there to begin with. So why would, in some cases, uh, the atoms make uh, sigma and pi bonds, and why, in some cases, we will, will the atoms go through the hybridization process? And the answer is pretty clear if you take a look at it. What we looked at before when we did sigma and pi bonds, all of the orbitals will, were already filled, had at least one or two electrons in them. In the case where you have some of the p orbitals or s orbitals not completely filled, it now allows us for a process where we can reshape the orbitals by moving electrons around and reshaping them. So usually that hybridization process happens when there's some empty p orbitals available for the process. So what happens now? What does that mean? What does an sp orbital look like and how does it form? Well, for example, take uh, an s orbital that looks like a spherical in shape and take a p orbital that looks like two lobes they're opposite one another like that, so that would be a single p orbital and a single s orbital. And when you bring those together, you can create an sp orbital. And an sp orbital would look something like this, where you have a lobe on one end and a tiny little lobe on the other end. So if you go ahead and hybridize two orbitals like that, you end up with a shape like that. Now, if you take, if you start with two orbitals that look like that, you end up with two orbitals that look like that. You can't just lose an orbital. So where is the second orbital? Well, the second orbital would look like this, where the main lobe would be in the opposite direction and the tiny lobe would be like this. So this is an s orbital. You join that with one of the p orbitals. And remember that you can only do that when you have electrons in them in an excited state like that. So an s orbital and a p orbital with a single electron like that. And it will then form two sp orbital. So we have an sp orbital here and we have an sp orbital there. And each of the two sp orbitals has a single electron in it. There we go, there we go. Single electron. Well, it almost looks like little fishes, don't they? Interesting. So, so we have two electrons, one in each sp orbital, and those can then form bonds with another atom. Uh, for example, we can have beryllium chloride because each of the chlorine atoms needs one additional electron to form a complete octet in its, uh, in its valence shell, and so the bonding can take place that. So what happens then when those two sp orbitals come together in a single atom? It will look something like this. So we have one main lobe this way with a small lobe this way. We have one main lobe this way with a small lobe this way. And typically the small lobes may not necessarily be drawn, but you have to realize that they are there. 
So the vast majority of time, the one electron will spend its time in this lobe and the other electron will spend its time in this lobe. So ending up with two new shape of, uh, shaped uh, orbitals that are now able to form a bond. So we'll put the one electron in here, put the other electron in there, and now beryllium is ready to start forming bonds with other atoms. So how does beryllium chloride then form? So beryllium chloride like that. Notice that each of the chlorine atoms can take one of its p orbitals because it has just one electron in that. Let me draw what that looks like. So chlorine in the 3s orbital has two electrons and in the 3p orbitals, so this is chlorine in the 3p orbitals, it has two electrons in that one, two electrons in that one, and simple one electron there. So this orbital, this p orbital from chlorine can bond with one of the sp orbitals from beryllium and then the other chlorine this p orbital from the other chlorine can form with the other sp orbital from the beryllium and so when we then form bonds it will look like this so this would then form a bond like that there's your chlorine and so we have that region now with two electrons in it here we have let me make a little room here so here we have the other p orbital from the other chlorine like that forming another bond like that. And so that's how bonds are made with hybridized orbitals. We change the shape of the orbital. Now we typically do that as the atom through this process, through this hybridization. All kinds of different ways in which this hybridization process can take place depending upon which of these orbitals are filled in the first place. So we're systematically going to go through each of the possibilities and show you how the hybridization process works in each of those cases. But at least there it gives you a pretty good feel of what hybridization is and how that's utilized for the atoms to make bonds which otherwise could not be formed because like in the case of beryllium they already have the uh, valence, um, valence orbit is filled and there would normally not be an opportunity to make bonds otherwise.